On this edition of The Correspondence, on the heels of what may be his last trip overseas, President Obama says now is not the time to retreat from global trade, saying the U.S. must take a more active role in protecting workers and the environment. Russia and three African nations are withdrawing their support for the International C Criminal Court in The Hague, even as the ICC opens its first major investigations outside Africa. And South Korea facing a major political shakeup as lawmakers pursue possible impeachment proceedings against that country's president over an alleged influence peddling scandal. Hello and welcome to the correspondence on Voice of America. I'm Milar Sega in Washington. President Obama finished his last foreign tour in Peru pretty much the way he began it in Europe, reassuring world leaders that U.S. international priorities will not change much under President-elect Donald Trump. Here's VOA Cindy Sane reporting from Lima, Peru. President Barack Obama met with the leaders of the 21 Asia-Pacific Economic Conference, still expressing his support for international trade and the Trans-Pacific Partnership, while conceding it is not up to him anymore. At the end of the final news conference of the trip, Obama had some sobering words of advice for the incoming president, saying America is indispensable in protecting world order and ensuring peace and stability. If we're not making the argument and fighting for it, even if sometimes we're not able to deliver it 100 percent everywhere, then it collapses. And there's nobody to fill the void. Asked if he would refrain from criticizing Trump when he takes office, he said he might speak out if he believed core values were threatened. And joining us now to discuss how U.S. foreign and economic policy might be different under President-elect Donald Trump, I'm joined in our studio by VOA White House correspondent Mary Alice Salinas, and along with our senior VOA economics correspondent Jim Randall. Mary Alice, I'll start with you. Uh, since the president just got back from his trip to Europe and Peru, uh, what are foreign world leaders most worried about in a Donald Trump presidency? Well, there's so much uncertainty right now, and mostly about security alliances and economic alliances. It's a and, change and from the status policy. quo, isn't it, it? It totally is, and it's the uncertainty itself is it really has a lot of people very, very nervous. And so that's part of what the president did, um, you know, really reaffirming where they've been during his administration, sure. but also saying, you know, give this incoming president a chance. What so try to calm everyone. Right. What you have here, though, is a very unpredictable president-elect. Uh, did, did Mr. Obama succeed in, in allaying some of those fears, do you think? Um, not entirely. Not entirely. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so because there's so much uncertainty at this point about what President-elect Trump is actually going sure. to do. But, but I th part of what he did was say, look, there's certain mechanisms in the United States that keep rolling in military, in, in policy, people to people ties. It's going sure. to keep functioning. Wait and see. And, and, uh, and remember that this America has these certain values, and so give it a chance. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But Jim Randall, I want to get you into this because you've been covering this a lot. One of the bigger uh, major announcements in Peru was that uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, according to President-elect Donald Trump, is dead. He's going to shelve that, that plan that took seven years to negotiate. Um, well, he, he what, was ran, his what was his reasoning for that, though? He ran on a, on a platform of getting tough on trade and killing the TPP is definitely getting tough. The rationale, the, the premise that he's basing this on is that, uh, in his view, trade is responsible, poorly negotiated trade deals are responsible for the loss of millions of manufacturing jobs. Trade is certainly responsible, according to the uh, economists that I've interviewed, many of them, uh, trade is responsible for some of the lost jobs, but uh, the no, rising tide right. of automation, uh, more robots, more efficiency, that's the real culprit. So, Jim, how does not engaging in global trade bring jobs back, though? Well, if you accept the premise that trade was responsible for the loss of jobs, then changing trade might do that. But uh, there's an awful lot of uh, experts who say trade wasn't the problem. So fixing trade, no matter what you do with trade, it's not going to have that much impact on jobs. Manufacturing, we make as many things as we ever did. 
uh, but we use a lot fewer people to do it. Okay, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the impact on, on, on the U.S. economy if that happens. But first, uh, Mary Alice, so, so uh, to world leaders in Peru this week, uh, President Obama essentially conceded defeat that he could no longer do anything about TPP, that it's now up to the next administration. What does that do to the president's Asia pivot? It, it guts. It guts it, the it Asia guts pivot, it, right? It, it guts it. It, it, it removes it, us from that. The economic underpinning foundation of this is gone and and the president-elect has indicated um, he's interested in bilateral trade negotiations which is something that the Obama administration says also dilutes America's power America's voice because we're not going to be at the table we, where we can all agree on labor standards or right. fair trade or or human rights and those kinds of things to to along with um, prosper from the trade uh, to to make sure that right. democratic values are being adhered to. Sure. And Jim, what we're hearing a, a lot is that, in fact, uh, 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 disengaging ourselves from trade uh, in Asia actually hurts the U.S. economy and possibly gives China uh, uh, an opening. Well, China is in the has been hard at work in creating its own trade group, in, in, which will include some of the same nations that, pardon me, <clears throat> the TPP covered. And also, uh, only 4% of the world's population is within the United States. So if companies that have already sold everything they can sell in the United States, if they want to sell more stuff, they need to go overseas. And the Asian nations uh, in TPP and elsewhere are the fastest growing economies on Earth. So uh, you ignore those at, at your economic peril. Part of the reason why the deficit between China and the U.S. has been so great is because we Americans, we love low prices. What happens uh, to, pr to these prices if we disengage uh, from, from Asia, where a lot of, a well, big source the, of the... The, uh, quick, the quick answer is probably uh, prices at Walmart won't be quite as low as they have been, but there's, you know, as it's, uh, it's always true in economics, that sure. there's, it's, it's more convoluted than it seems. And also, the, the arguments made by pro-TPP people uh, did not convince a lot of people who would normally be in the, you know, on the side of the Democrats, the labor and environmentalists and mm -hmm. so forth. They thought that TPP was flawed, and therefore they uh, pressed their, their demo normally Democratic ally, Mr. Obama, to, to not, to not, not right. move forward. Uh, and Mary Ellis, I mean, looking at the big picture here, we have uh, uh, this candidate who basically ran on an America first, anti-trade, uh, climate change denying kind of platform, how does that affect the U.S. image abroad? I mean, we have, uh, as you heard in the report, we've always been sort of the essential, uh, indispensable country because we take leadership on some of these things. How does that affect us? Well, I mean, many nations around the world are wondering whether America has the ability to follow through on its promises, and that is really not good. Right. It, it, so it, it really puts into question, casts doubt on on how reliable America is, and uh, this administration would argue, America's leadership around the world, really the impact is huge. As much uncertainty as we're seeing, Jim, for some reason, Wall Street, which hates uncertainty, for some reason has been rallying on a Donald Trump presidency. How do, if how do you I, explain if I, if I really knew the answer to that, I wouldn't be working here. I'd be, I'd be I'd right. on an island someplace. I think, just basically I think that giving the, them... the, the conventional wisdom is that Mr. Trump has promised to spend a lot more money on infrastructure, which uh, those plans hadn't gone anywhere because the Republican-controlled Congress didn't want to spend money. Uh, he wants to spend more money on the military. Spending more money uh, and borrowing more money because yeah. there will be deficit spending tends to raise interest rates. Bankers like higher interest rates because it's easier for them to make a little money or make a lot of money. And it's uh, so the, uh, Wall Street is reading this as at least in the short term will be positive for, for them. And yes, they've hit a couple of records. I'll give you the last word, uh, Mary Alice. After President Obama leaves uh, uh, office uh, in January, uh, Democrats are going to need a lot of leadership. Uh, is he planning on coming back? What, what are, does he have any plans uh, at all? Who takes well, over well, the Democratic that is, Party? Well, that, that is under discussion right now. And, and Vice President Joe Biden was sort of floated. And, and that's just one of many, many 
I'm not saying that's a possibility at all, but he. These are the, the kind of questions president. that are going to consume you once you get into that <laughs> well, listen, White House press office. Well, listen, all I know uh, is that the president has a long vacation he has promised to his wife planned. And beyond that, I wish no, we'll, we'll see. Thank you so much, Mary Ellis and Jim Randall. I uh, thank you for your contributions to this program. It's time now for a short break. But when we come back, the influence of the International Criminal Court in The Hague appears to be waning with the defections of Russia and several African nations from the ICC. This is The Correspondence on The Voice of America.